Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On tonight's Omar Vision Unity tutorial, we are going to find out what the heck is the lightweight render pipeline and how we could use it to do post processing effects. Okay, so this is a game right here, and right now the scene is rendered normally the way Unity normally renders a scene, and I'm going to press play. <laughs> Okay, and this is the way like most normal scenes look, the um, crispiness and clarity of the objects and distance, how you see things in distance. But then what I have here is I'm just going to press these keys and I switch into a mode where we're seeing some post-processing effects being done. Like the blurring of the distance, the grainy film, the, um, the discoloration and everything like that. So, this is what we're going to learn how to do today. Let me just drag and drag that off the screen. So, to set up this um, thing that we're going to do tonight, I'm going to open up a new Unity project. And these are the steps we're going to go through to get it to, you know, to work, to do that post-processing. So, let me just start off with a new Unity project. Start opening that up. And I'll just call this the LRP. PPP tutorial and I'll make it a 3D project and I'll say create. Okay, the default 3D project has come up. It's an empty scene. And as we can see right here, step number one is we're going to install the lightweight render pipeline. All right, off screen for you down here. We're going to see what packages we do have installed right now. Lightweight render pipeline is not there. So let's fix that by going to the package manager window and going to the advanced show preview packages and post, but, but, but here we go. Render pipeline, lightweight 4.9. Pick that and install that packet. And the package finishes installing. We'll have what we need. Come on. <laughs> so you know where the long ranger takes his garbage to the dump, to the dump, to the dump. There, there's a joke. Okay, there we go. Package finishes installing. And I could look down here and I could see the lightweight render package and what's inside of it. We have the shader, shader graph stuff and the things we need for post-processing. They're already in this lightweight render package. So although over here, we're gonna do post-processing and you may see over here er, that there's this post-processing package separately. When I download the, um, Lightweight render pipeline, I get that. And I also get the shader graph. So I don't have to choose to install this or this separately. Um, I just want to clean up the rest of my project here. I'm going to take off these packages that I don't need to keep my project small. So I'm going to remove each one of them. All right, so I went through and removed everything except the lightweight render pipeline and the package manager UI, which I think is this. All right, so back to my assets. I have my scene. What's my next step? Where's that little window? Come back here. Okay, my next step is to make a lightweight render pipeline asset and a post-processing profile asset. Okay, so I'll just go here into my assets window, right click and say create um, rendering lightweight render pipeline asset. And I'll just name mine LRP for short. And then I'll also create a post-processing profile and I'll name mine PPP for short. Okay, what's next? Then I have to set up my project to use the light rate under pipeline asset. Okay, so we're gonna go to edit project settings and here on the graphics, we have 
here where we could say the pipeline asset to use, and I'm going to pick LRP. Good. What's next? Next step is um, we have to set up the camera with all this um, post-processing information. So we're going to um, add two components to our camera. We're going to add the post-process layer component and the post-process volume component. And then the camera and all three components we're going to set to have to be on the layer post-processing. OK, let's see. So we go to the camera and we add a, well, instead of looking for it in the list, we could just type it in post process layer. That was the first one that we needed to add. And here we go. It shows it right here. Um, and the layer it said to make it on the, they all have to be on the same layer. So I'm going to set this to be on the post processing layer. I'm going to set my camera to be on the post processing layer. And what's the other one I have to add in is the post-process volume component. So I'm going to add post-process volume component. OK. And does this have a layer to set? No. All right. So now I added these two components to the camera. Boom, boom. And I got the post-processing set as the layer. Step six is on the post-process volume set is global to true and a profile to use our asset for PPP. So is globals right here. I'll set it to true. And the profile that's going to use this profile we created here. It's going to use the PPP. OK, so at this point. In our scene we should be set up to actually make a scene and then on the profile we could add effects and see the effects take place. All right, so let's do a scene. So, missile pango blango, zappa, there you go, there's a scene. And uh, we have a bunch of objects in here so we could see how the effects look and how the graphics change with the effects. So what did I do? Well, I just basically made a scene. I had a player in here that I added so we could walk around in the scene and see how it looks. Um, I added a terrain and I added some model homes and some balls. They're just going to go bouncing around. So if I press play now, it looks like this. Or it plays music. And right now the camera is not attached to my player, so you can just see the player moving around like this. And if I attach the camera to the player as a child, then when I play it, it should go like inside his head instead. Like this. See? See my two arms kind of sticking out there, looking around. All right, so now um, everything's rendering using the lightweight render pipeline because we set our project settings to that. But now we want to add some of the post processing effects and where we add the post processing effects is here on the post -proce processing profile, which we added to our camera. So here I have the camera selected and remember we added a post processing volume and it's using our post processing profile right here. So right here in the post processing volume, I could add effects or I could do it from here. So I'm going to do it from here. It's a little bit simpler to see on the inspector window. And when I say add effect, these are all the effects that are currently there that we could add. So um, one of the first effects is usually coloring. So right now there is no kind of coloring going on on the scene, but I could basically check this say tone mapping and there are some settings here like neutral it's slight but um the, the color changes are neutral there then there's aces which kind of looks like it's kind of like a darker look and then custom woo, just opens it up and you could do your own stuff there but i'm gonna i'm gonna set it to neutral all right and then you know you could basically play around with everything down here like temperature cool or hot and tint, which looks like it's going from red to green here. 
and there's other settings for um, color grading. So that's one effect, um, and that's what that one looks like. Another effect, let's try another one, is the bloom. And I think what bloom does is it takes any um, light colors, any emissive, any light colors, and it kind of like, well, let's see. Here we go. Here's intensity. Right now the bloom's at zero. And if I up it, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I put this angle different, like the skyline back there in the background. And if I intensify the bloom, it's subtle, but in the background, basically if I had like neon lights, they'd be blushing. Um, and there's a threshold here, which I guess is how far the bloom could blank out stuff. Um, what else we have? Um, we have depth of field, which means um, from the camera, things that are further away. Let's see, focus. So the distance to the point of focus, say it's 10. And this is from the camera. Right, so right now the camera is like up here looking down at the scene. An aperture is, this is basically how fuzzy my view is going to get. So, oh, there it happened. I had to give it a chance to catch up to me. I could see this better if I'm playing the game. That way I'm viewing from like inside my player's head. Okay, so I'm inside the player's head, and if I play with the aperture, let's see what happens. Focus distance. It's supposed to make objects that are further away. Oh, I know what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I put a control in here to press Z and X to make the focus come in and out. So, oh man, you see the settings I have now and the blur it has on it? Oh, uh, that's what we got going on. So the focal length, I guess, is my zone, my focus zone, right? Like how close to me, my cam the camera where the focus zone is, things far away are blurrier. Aperture is just how blurry those things that are out of my focus zone get. Oh, man. Distance, and something's going on. It's not updating quick enough, but when I press play, I think I saw it happen. It's like when I stop pressing play. So here I got to turn on. So when I have that music on, the full effect is on. And you can see there's a little blur for the things that are further away. That's the depth of motion effect. And another effect here is grain. Let's see what that one does. Colored grain, okay. Intensity of the grain. Let's see. Oh, I see, it's getting grainy. Let me open, maximize this window here. So you see how the, uh, the visuals are a lot more grainy, right? With the intensity up to maximum or down to low where they're smooth or grainy. And let's see what this one does. There's the size of the green. Mm -hmm. Looks like a Van Gogh painting to this. So that's green, huh? Let's see what else we got here. Lens distortion. Uh, let's see the intensity negative. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a distorted view of the world. Or this way. I got bug eyes. Okay, and let me see something. Um, it says X multiplier, Y multiplier. Uh, I could distort only on one axis. Okay, and let me see this one here. One axis or another axis. Oh. Kind of have like a widescreen effect over here. So that's kind of cool. What else we got? Unity, Viginette. 
Vigenet's a good one because with the Vigenet, there's classic. Let me take off the um, lens distortion. We saw what that does, so we could just remove it. And let me take off the grain. We saw what that does. Let me see how the Vigenet works here. So here's mode classic. And what's this mean with color? I pick different colors. I don't really see anything happening. I don't know how to use all these yet. I'm just playing around with them. Intensity may be something important. Oh, oh, okay, look at that. It's kind of like the edges are burning off here. That's the thing. There we go. So we could have a dark, you could have it burn off to red. Oh, I see. I see. The roundness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the classic. Then what's the mast? The mass one I was playing with. So basically with the mask one, what I could do is I could um, get a texture, a mask texture. So let me look on Google here. I did a search for mask texture images. And I have kind of like all these black and white things. Um, let me look like here. This one's like a circle here. Okay. Hmm. Is that what I was looking for? Um, this one? Why are they all coming out? Oh, here we go. This one. Black and transparent. So let me try this one. Let me save it to my desktop and then put it in the game. Okay, and I'll put that in my texture folder. And let me try another mask that maybe could make it look like I have a really, um, like the screen, the grain of the screen is dirty. Um... I don't really see one here. Let me change my search to old film texture and I find this guy here. Let me try this one. Save image to my desktop. And I'm done with Google. Put this in my textures folder. Now I got I got two textures. I got one that's like a circle and one that's like a really old fashioned film. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the Vigenet over here um, of my PPP, my profile thing. And I have masked on. And I am going to use this setting over here where I specify a texture. So first, if I specify this texture, oh, it's kind of backwards. I have this blanked out in the middle. Um, but it says the settings are invalid. I could press this button to fix it. Oh, there you go. That's what I was thinking. And now it's kind of like I see something from inside the, uh, like through a mask. So that's how this one looks. Got to turn on the effect. See. Interesting. And let's see what the other texture looks like. Um, this one I picked here. So it looks like I'll have to press fix first. And then it could look like an like an old Western film or something like that with the with that texture. And I guess there's others here you could play with, but this is basically how you could use post processing with the lightweight render pipeline and you know change the look and feel of your games. Thanks, and have a very good evening. <laughs>